I'm Stacy, the encaustic mixed media artist behind Studio Stacy. In today's video, I thought it would be fun to talk about different things, different mixed media items that you can use with encaustic. A few videos back, and I will link that up there somewhere, I talked about different things that you could paint on with encaustic paint, and so this is kind of a follow through of that video since you guys seem to like that video so much. I thought I would divide this video up into two different sections. The first section being non-traditional art supplies, things like tar, shellac, coffee, tea bags, rust, anything that's more non-traditional. And then the second section of the video is going to be your more traditional um, mixed media supplies, things like watercolor, pan pastels, oil sticks, and India ink. Okay, so first up is tar. And tar, if I can zoom in here, you can see gets into all of these little crevices. So all of this dark area, that is all tar. This here is tar. All of this is tar. I feel that tar works best when you have it on a highly textured surface or area of the painting. And in this case, it's pretty textured. So here I'm just rubbing the tar on and then I'm wiping the majority of it away. And that just brings out all of that texture as you can see here. And upcoming here is the final and finished painting. This painting has not only tar on it, but it also has tea bags embedded into it. So right here, you see that triangle shape? Of course, that's the shape of a tea bag. And I just saved a bunch of tea bags. So all of this kind of tea color is a simply a tea bag. And I saved the tea bags, like I was saying, and embedded them into the wax. And it just adds another layer and another dimension, more color to the piece. Instant coffee is something really fun to play around with. So I'm gonna just experiment around with this panel that is just primed with some encaustic gesso. I'm taking just plain old water in this spray bottle and spritzing the panel to make it a little bit damp. And then just adding some of that coffee and really rubbing it around in areas just to see what would happen when you rub it around versus when you just kind of let it sit. Little experiment here. And up next, I'm just gonna experiment around with this panel that already has encaustic wax on it. So I can show you the difference. Same exact concept here, except I didn't spray the panel with water first. I just applied some of that coffee down, but this instant coffee works really well because it instantly makes coffee. So you can instantly add some color to the panel. Okay, I'm gonna put those little coffee stained pieces off to the side to dry. And while those are drying, let's talk about shellac. Now I did not invent this shellac technique. As a matter of fact, I didn't invent a lot of these techniques. So if I learned a specific technique from a specific artist that I haven't mentioned, I will make sure I put them down below in the description. So go check those out because I don't want to take credit for anything that I <laughs> did not create or that I rather learned from somebody else. So this shellac technique, that is this, it's this webbing kind of look. This I learned from another artist, Alicia, and I will link her down below. And there's a lot of artists out there using shellac in various beautiful different ways. I mainly, for whatever reason, mainly just use it in my water pieces, a piece like this. A quick word of caution with shellac. I would highly suggest you let it dry, let it become a little bit tacky before you take the torch to it. When it's wet, it catches on fire, and that could be both hazardous and dangerous to your health. Let it dry just a bit and you won't have a fire. The last non-traditional art supply I'd like to talk about today is rust. 
Now I have an entire blog post, which I will link it down below in the description on how I use Rust with encaustic. So um, definitely go check that out if you're interested. I also have two YouTube really tiny little short YouTube videos on that, which I will link above here. If you're not interested in going on YouTube to a blog post, you can click on those. At any rate, let's talk about Rust. Rust will dye an encaustic piece. So all three of these pieces have some areas of rust on them. And like this area here, you can see that really, it's a really rusty line. All of this is dyed with rust. And the beauty of it is it's also see-through. So you can see the colors underneath it. And then this piece, slightly different, all of these uh, grid marks here were all rust stained. I have found the key to transferring rust onto an encaustic piece is two things, vinegar water and to make sure that most of the sides of the rusted piece are touching the encaustic piece. Otherwise it doesn't transfer. And the last piece, these nails, they're rust stained and then I also painted with a rust dye. So there you have it. That is rust. Okay, these coffee stained panels are now dry and this one is the one with the wax on it already. And this one was just encaustic gesso down. So you can see they're very similar in the way the coffee took to the panels. This with the one with just gesso is a little bit lighter in color than the one that has the wax on it already. But um, the crystals don't rub off unless I didn't get water in some areas, in which case you see they'll just you know rub right off, right off. But where there's water, these are you know pretty much set in there. So again, I encourage you to experiment around with coffee. And then of course, on um, the one with the wax on it, you're gonna wanna torch this to get that to really set into the wax panel. Now that we talked about non-traditional artist material, let's talk about more traditional artist material. Things like India ink. You can use India ink as the last layer of a painting, like I did on this black of this painting. Or you could use it on the first layers of a painting, like these three little mini guys. They don't have any wax on them yet. And you can use India ink anywhere in between on your paintings. So India ink adheres to the wax and also just adheres to the plain gesso encaustic board. No wax on it at all. I will insert here a couple of pictures of some other paintings with India ink that I've used in several different layers. I unfortunately have a lot of these paintings already packed for the upcoming art show. So I don't have them out to show you specifically, but there'll be a couple more examples for you. Up next, we have pan pastels. And as you can see, I have quite the collection of these. These are a lot of fun to use with encaustic wax. I wanted to show you these little spongy dabbers that you use with the pan pastels. And I have a variety of them and they come in a variety of different sizes. But much like my encaustic brushes, I use like this for just blues and browns. I don't have one of these for every single color of pan pastels because that would be a lot of little dabbers. And because I don't have a painting that's not packed away, with pan pastels on it. I'm gonna drop one in here so you'll get to see what one looks like. And then on this coffee stained painting, I thought I would just show you how it sits on top of the wax versus sinking into the wax like some of the other material. Okay, hopefully you could see that in the video, but all these raised areas, that's where the pastel really sticks to. So if I rub it over this whole area, 
it picks up the raised areas down here specifically, this line, a little bit in here. Hopefully you could see that in the video, but that is pan pastels and you can get some amazing effects with it. Up next, let's talk watercolor, pastels, and neocolor crayons. Watercolor and the firm pastel sticks are a bit difficult to use on top of wax. So I like to use them as an underpainting or on the first layers before I put any wax down. Here is an example of a watercolor painting and I will drop a picture in now of what it looked like before the wax. And here it is with the wax on it. So it really, the wax just, you can add a lot of extra details and extra layers with the wax and it gives you some texture that I cannot get with watercolor. And up next is an underpainting done with those hard pastel sticks that I was talking about earlier. And they are a little bit brighter than the watercolor and the neocolor crayons, which you'll see coming up next. Rather than starting with a blank white panel, when I go to put the wax on, I like to start with an underpainting. And as you can see from this final painting, it looks really nothing like that underpainting, but it just kind of gives me an idea and a jumping off point. You can use Neocolor crayons also as an underpainting layer, like I did with this piece here. You can also use the crayons on top of the wax, which are great for adding little teeny tiny details in like I did in this buffalo painting. Another way to add detail to the paintings is with one of my favorite ways. It's the Durant Inktense pencils. And they make these really fine lines because they're pencils, but they work great with the wax. And it's just really nice for adding in these fine details like I am with this door. And like you will see me coming up here with the roses. <music> art supply that I'm going to talk about today is oil stick. I like to use oil stick much like I like to use the tar and on this you'll see it has tar in the top up here on these tree lines and then down below on the trunks it's oil stick. And then I've also added some shadows in with the oil stick as well. But oil stick fills in the texture much like the tar does and really brings out all of that yummy goodness. you enjoyed this little video. If you have any questions about any of the products that I talked about, definitely leave them below in the comments. I would be happy to answer anything that I can. If you are an encaustic artist and have experimented with anything else, also leave that below. Let me know how that material worked out. I would love to know. I'm always looking for good ideas. Thanks again for coming along. If you happen to like this video 
and wouldn't mind doing so. I would so much appreciate it if you gave it a great big thumbs up. Like I said, if you have any questions or comments, just leave them below. And if you aren't subscribed and would consider doing so, I would also really appreciate that. We'll talk to you soon and bye for now.